mission is to provide complete balanced nutrition for strength and energy. Yay! Great tasting and sure. With 9 grams of protein, 27 vitamins and minerals, and nutrients to support immune health. Happening now. After a year and a half of living in deplorable conditions inside of tents in Matamoros, Mexico, asylum seekers are being walked into the U.S. and bused to their final destination. Learn what community organizers are saying this represents tonight. And the winter storms didn't just have an impact on crops. We're going to take a look at what it did to the beef and poultry industries and how that might affect you at the grocery store. She was an original freedom writer, a retired army sergeant, and a San Antonian. I'm Courtney Friedman. Coming up tonight, we honor the life and legacy of Patricia Dilworth. And this week just keeps feeling more and more spring-like. However, a cold front will be paying us a visit soon. I'll let you know how that's going to affect your weekend coming right up. The News at 5 starts right now. And first at five, effective immediately, all Texas teachers along with school and child care staff eligible to receive the COVID-19 vaccine. The new directive from the state follows a letter from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services ordering states to expand vaccine eligibility to include those who work in schools or daycare centers. Previously, only those eligible under phase 1A or 1B were allowed to request an appointment for a vaccination. It's not yet clear when the next phase will be announced, but again, teachers and school workers now have the green light to get the vaccine. Also new at five asylum seekers have spent more than a year and a half living in deplorable conditions, intense in Matamoros, Mexico, under the Trump administration's remain in Mexico policy. Now, under the new presidential administration, the program that kept asylum seekers in Mexico is no longer in place. Jonathan Cato is down near the border where he talked to some activist groups about what's next for thousands of immigrants as they try to make their way into the U.S. Jonathan? Certainly brighter days ahead for thousands of families now. Community organizers ensuring they have everything they need as they embark on their next journey. So MPP means Migrant Protection Protocol, and it was a policy that was put in place in the Trump administration. Andrea Rudnick volunteer with Team Brownsville, an organization aimed at providing aid to migrant families, explaining the protocol that kept thousands of families in tents for over a year and a half. When our our new president was uh, inaugurated. He made a promise to stop MPP because of its inhumanity and because of the injustice for the people that have been living in very squalid conditions in, in Mexico. After fleeing their countries from violence and risking their well-being in hazardous living conditions, asylum seekers now allowed to pursue their shot at the American dream. The groups that are crossing are about 25 people at a time, and so what they've been doing is crossing uh, between four and six groups a day. Immigrants consisting mostly of women and children, but Rudnick says it's a mixed crowd that are heading to various destinations along the state and country. We provide them with backpacks, with a blanket, pillow, toiletries, um, toys, diapers for babies, just really meeting the needs. MPP is lifted, but the future is still uncertain for those fleeing violence and seeking asylum. My hope is that we never see the likes of MPP ever again. Um, it just cannot be that people are forced to live in that in such a, an inhumane way. Rudnick says they understand they will see an increase of migrants making their way into the U.S. and hopes the Biden administration will establish a way to assist in the process. Reporting in McAllen, Jonathan Cotto, back to you. Thank you, Jonathan. Tonight, 23 Texas counties, not including Bear, have received USDA disaster declarations. That'll mean emergency loans and other federal aid will be available for those counties. As for the overall estimated losses so far to the state's agriculture industry, $605 million, according to the Texas A&M Ag Life Extension Service that surveyed the damage. Our Jesse DeGriato now with the storm's impact on the beef and poultry industries and the prices we'll be paying. Despite any efforts to try to keep them warm, an estimated $230 million in livestock, including cattle, died in the miserable cold. There's no figure yet, but significant losses also were reported by Texas poultry producers who struggled to keep those warm as well. That probably ate up a lot more costs than they were expecting uh, in producing the birds this year. To provide energy for warmth, 
cattle had to eat. More hay was, was put out, more feed put out, and more cost because of that. But water for their cattle was just as crucial. You know, those cows drink between 10 to 20 gallons of water per head per day. That meant braving single-digit temperatures so they could use the water tanks at Brian Batiste's place out in southeast Bear County. You know, you still had to go out there and break ice and make sure those cows had access to plenty of water. The hardships on both producers and the animals they raise will be costly. And yet the Texas A&M Ag Life economist says prices really won't be affected since Texas also relies on out-of-state suppliers. Oftentimes storms like this cause some short-term market uh, turmoil, but really don't result in higher prices for consumers at the grocery store. Jesse Degollado, KSAT 12 News. Texas, I think it's a big mistake. Look, I hope everybody's realized by now these masks make a difference. President Joe Biden giving a brief reaction to Governor Greg Abbott's reversal of his mask mandate here in Texas. Since the announcement yesterday, many businesses are having to decide what their next steps may be. HEB among the first to release a statement yesterday saying that Workers will continue wearing masks and customers will be encouraged to do the same. Since then, several other San Antonio businesses have come out with similar statements saying their mask mandates aren't going anywhere. We have a growing list of those businesses right now on KSAT.com. Meanwhile, one day after that big announcement, Governor Greg Abbott will be joining us today for a special KSAT Q&A coming up at 6. Myra Arthur and I will talk with the governor about not only his decision to reverse the mandate, but why he believes now is the right time to reopen Texas businesses at 100% and what to expect moving forward as we continue to navigate this pandemic. Other top stories today, two people recovering this evening after being shot at a home on the southwest side early this morning. Officers responded to the home in the 2600 block of Quintana Road around 1.30 a.m. They found the injured victims inside along with a suspected gunman who had apparently passed out. Six people at home at the time. Witnesses say that inside the suspect started acting crazy, unquote, then began shooting the two victims. Those same witnesses say the man also pointed the gun at them. And in one case, the gun jammed when the suspect pulled the trigger. It's unclear what caused the suspect to pass out. He was later taken into custody. San Antonio police need your help in finding a murder suspect. 16 year old Isaiah Sullivan killed more than a week ago. Police say the boy was shot while inside the vehicle, inside a vehicle in the 8800 block of Starcrest. That's near Star Club Apartments. Officers say after he was shot, Sullivan thrown from the vehicle he was in. So far, police have no suspects. Anyone with information asked to call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. We have a heads up for those still looking to get a vaccination appointment. The reservation hotline for the WellMed COVID-19 clinics is now closed. This comes incredibly after all 30,000 appointment slots were filled. WellMed officials expect to reopen the reservation hotline this Friday if they get more vaccines in. At this time, they're expecting 9,000 more doses of the Moderna vaccine with new appointments getting underway next week. It's not just Texas loosening COVID-19 restrictions, which has prompted the White House and the CDC to urge Americans to stay vigilant and practice proper safety precautions. Hospital admissions nationwide have gone down nearly 50% in the last month, but the daily case average has increased 3.5% over the last seven days. Experts worry those numbers could go up even more with new variants that seem to be spreading across the country. This, as at least 11 states have either already loosened restrictions or plan to in the coming week. And the exact measures we have taken to stop the pandemic are now too often being flagrantly ignored. I would still encourage individuals to wear a mask. Meantime, vaccinations will soon be ramping up the Johnson & Johnson vaccine already making it into people's arms. And the CDC reports that more than 51 million Americans have had at least one shot. That's about 15% of the population. Some surprising new revelations on the Capitol Hill riots about the hours long delay in sending National Guard troops to help out during the January 6th siege. This is law enforcement in Washington prepare for the potential of new threats of violence tomorrow. ABC's Mary Alice Parks has more. 
Lawmakers for the first time hearing about restrictions and red tape at the Pentagon that slowed the D.C. National Guard from sending urgent reinforcements to the Capitol during the deadly January 6th insurrection. You could have had them there earlier, hours earlier, if it had been approved. We could have helped extend the perimeter and help push back the crowd. The commanding general of the D.C. National Guard said he did not receive approval from the Secretary of the Army to send forces to the Capitol until three hours and 19 minutes after he first received that call from Capitol Police requesting backup. In the days leading up, apparently fears that troops on the Capitol grounds could look bad. Had this all been pre-approved by the Secretary of Defense, how quickly could have you gotten how many people to the Capitol. 20 minutes. Now remember, we're all watching this. It's it's a riot. Um, and yet it took more than three hours. Officials from federal law enforcement agencies, including FBI Director Chris Wray, have been widely criticized for not working better together and not being prepared for the possibility of violence on January 6th. How can the president be confident now in Director Wray's ability to protect against another attack? He is, uh, remains confident in, in, in uh, FBI Director Wray. He, uh, of course, we will be monitoring the hearings. And I think there will be lessons learned uh, as we come out of the hearings. Uh, that uh, will be applied across government. Now, nearly two months later, the Capitol is still fortified and on alert for the possibility of even more violence. ABC News obtained an internal bulletin from Capitol Police about the possibility of a militia plot to storm the Capitol on or around March 4th. QAnon conspiracy theorists believe that President Trump could still be installed again as president. And so local law enforcement officials here in Washington have been stepping up security again this week. Mary Alice Parks, ABC News, Washington. The Iraqi military says 10 missiles have slammed into an air base that houses U.S. coalition and Iraqi forces. There are no reports of casualties or damage. The Al-Assad Air Base is the same one that Iran attacked last year in retaliation for a U.S. drone strike that killed Iranian Commander Qassem Soleimani. It's not really clear who carried out this latest attack. Bright, sunny day, beautiful, beautiful day across the Alamo City. We do have some high thin clouds streaming overhead and they will make for a nice sunset, especially in locations just south of San Antonio. So if you're south of town, have your camera ready. 38 this morning, we felt the chill out there. That's 10 degrees below average, but then we warmed to 70, which is exactly average. Even Del Rio hitting 80 degrees. That's the reading in Warren's backyard. 73 Panama Maria, Leon Springs right now at 70 degrees. Shirts even 71, Universal City 72. Fairly similar conditions across Bear County and surrounding counties. You get to New Braunfels 73 and Bernie currently at 71. This evening, pretty uneventful. Just some high thin cirrus clouds moving overhead. Not much of a breeze out there and temperatures falling, but not as drastically as what we had last night. I mean, by midnight will be 54 degrees and we're looking at some 40s tomorrow morning. Warming up until the weekend. We'll talk more about that coming up. Thank you, Adam. Still ahead at five, a final goodbye said today for an Army veteran who also happened to be one of the original Freedom Riders. Loved ones remembering Patricia Dilworth next. She was one of the original Freedom Riders. She was an Army Sergeant, a San Antonian, and a hero. So today, with heavy hearts, Patricia Dilworth's loved ones and admirers said goodbye to her at a memorial and funeral service. As we celebrate Women's History Month, Courtney Friedman brings us the powerful memories of a woman who was an integral piece of our nation's complicated history. We were going into the part of the train station that was for whites only. This video was shot two years ago, a coveted interview with original Mississippi Freedom writer and retired Army Sergeant Patricia Dilworth. She died February 21st. She lived outside of her comfort zone simply to make a difference in the lives of others. Dr. Jerry Bailey was Dilworth's pastor here in San Antonio and explained with pride about how she was from Tucson, Arizona. And when she saw segregation inspired violence in the South in 1961, she packed her bags for Mississippi. She would ride throughout the state 
uh, for the purpose of desegregating uh, lunch counters, schools. Dilworth was arrested alongside Barbara Bowie's brother. It ended up being about 400 of them uh, in that penitentiary for 39 days. Inspiring Bowie herself to participate in sit-ins at the age of 13, and then decades later joined Dilworth every year where they lived in San Antonio, educating children about the freedom writer history and the power of nonviolent protest. Trisha Dilworth operated in deep water. I hope people will fight that, not just for blacks, but for anybody that is being persecuted. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. What a legacy she leaves behind. All right, weather-wise, today another one of those great, sunny, beautiful days. It was. It was very comfortable outside and pleasant and a little uptick in temperatures compared to what we had yesterday. And we're going to warm up through Friday. So up until the weekend, we'll continue to tack on a few degrees to that afternoon temperature. But as we transition to a cooler weekend, it's going to get gusty out there and you'll notice the wind as we go into Friday with the temperatures then falling behind that gusty wind as we get into the weekend. Let's take a look outside right now. Beautiful, sunny, 70 degrees, dew point of 41. So we've got the comfortable temperature and the comfortable lack of humidity, a south southeasterly breeze at only eight miles per hour and the southeasterly wind We'll increase the dew points a little bit in the coming days, but you're really not going to notice. You're not going to feel the change that much. You look at the state and even all the way up to Plains into Nebraska and South Dakota, we're looking at 60s, some 70s as well throughout a good portion of Texas. 75 Midland, 74 Junction, 72 in Austin, Laredo checking in at 78. So right near the 80 degree mark southwest of town and even along the border. Del Rio currently 78 degrees, but Kerrville right now at 72. So tonight, not quite as cool as what we had last night. Early this morning, we had parts of the hill country hit the freezing point. I don't think it's going to be quite as cold. We'll basically stop in the 40s. So temperature falling off. Low to mid 40s parts of the hill country, mid 40s for most of the rest of the South Texas, about 45 tomorrow morning in San Antonio, 46 Leon Springs, New Braunfels, about 44 in the morning in Castroville at 48. Then by the afternoon, we warm it up a little bit more. Into the 70s, we're looking at low to mid 70s. Elmendorf 75, 73 the high in Bernie, and Helotus about 73. So a comfortable, beautiful day. And then we ratchet it up a little bit more into Friday. We're looking at highs, upper 70s right near 80. And then the cooler air spills in. And this weekend, that's going to reset our temperatures actually below average for highs in the low to mid 60s for Saturday and Sunday. And with that transition, unfortunately, we don't see any chance of rain. Sometimes it's when you get those transitions that the rain chances come, but it's just not looking like the case, unfortunately, this time around. Dew points down near 40. I mentioned these will rise a little bit over the next couple of days, but you're not going to notice it much. You're not going to really notice an influx of humidity until about this time next week. Looking at the visible satellite imagery, some high clouds coming in from the southwest. These are coming off the Pacific. I think we'll have them streaming overhead tonight and through the day tomorrow, which usually makes for good sunrises and sunsets. I think especially the sunrise tomorrow morning uh, where we where you don't have the patchy fog, you could get some good color off those clouds. Otherwise, you look at this swirl near Los Angeles. That's an upper level disturbance that's going to be headed our way and it's providing some moisture to parts of the desert out there. I mean, you look at Southern California actually getting some rain from this. That's going to drop into Texas, but it's not going to have a whole lot to work with. And unfortunately, it's just going to drop our temperatures and not give us any rain chances. So some patchy fog tomorrow morning. Most of us in the mid 40s, then by the afternoon into the 70s with a lot of sunshine, a south southeasterly wind at 5 to 10. So not an excessive breeze until we get into Friday. We're talking gusts up to 30 miles per hour out of the northwest and then into the weekend. We see the reset in temperatures and a little extra cloud cover as well. Thank you, Adam. All right. Felt like the Spurs maybe took out some uh, disappointment on the Knicks last night. Well, given the fact that they lost to the Nets in overtime the day before. Now this is their first victory of the second game of back to backs this season. When we come back, it resulted in a huge second half. How did they pull that off? And the Spurs say their mask mandate stays coming up. 
All right, San Antonio Spurs responded to their 124-113 overtime loss to the Nets on Monday with a blowout win over the New York Knicks last night. And what made it even more amazing, they did go out five key players again with LaMarcus Aldridge added out with a stomach illness. The Spurs did get Kelvin Johnson back, who had not been on the court since Valentine's Day when he and three of his teammates tested positive for the coronavirus and had been quarantined. And he did not miss a beat, scoring nine points in his limited 11 minutes of action. Then just before they have a questionable call, one of the officials failed to whistle the ball out of bounds as time ran out at the end of the first half. Upon further review, they put seven-tenths of a second on the clock, enough time for Patty Mills to hit a corner three to give the Spurs a 51-47 lead at the half. Turns out that four-point cushion would not be necessary because the Spurs blow it out in the second half. Trey Lyles gets the party started with a pair of three-pointers. Spurs' lead expands to nine. The offensive attack continues. Patty Mills three, and the lead grows to 15. But the night belonged to Trey Lyles as he led the Spurs with a career-high 18 points in the 119-93 victory, their first win on the second game of back-to-backs this season. So how were the Spurs able to explode for 68 second-half points against a good defensive team? Guys were able to make shots, and, you know, we just stayed aggressive as a team. Uh, DeJounte stayed downhill. Debo, um, you know, he was finding an open man as well as getting his own. So guys stayed aggressive and were able to make shots. The second half, I was even shocked myself. I was looking up at the score, seeing, like, you know, it's taking off, getting stops and, you know, hitting shots and stuff. So... It was great to see, uh, you know, it was a great team win. It was a team effort win from the first guy all the way down. All right, the Spurs telling us that they will still mandate that fans wear masks and that they will hold attendance to this 3,200 when they begin allowing fans to return to the AT&T Center a week from this Friday. That despite the governor's order allowing Texas to open at 100% next Wednesday and dropping the mask mandate statewide. Pop not a big fan of that decision. I'm worried about the people in our state. Uh, that's a pretty mystifying decision considering uh, the situation that we're all in. But as far as the players go, uh, we, we listen to the NBA, not Governor Abbott. All right, coming up tonight on the Night Beat, Spurs Vice President and General Manager Casey Heverling will take us on a tour of the AT&T Center to show you some of the safety features that have been installed in anticipation of the fans returning on March the 12th. And you will need two apps, Clear Health and Spurs apps, and that's all coming up. We'll lead you through that tonight on the Night Beat. And the next game will be their final before the All-Star break tomorrow night, 730 against Oklahoma City, a little revenge matchup. Can't wait to see the new procedures. It's very interesting. And by the way, once you get it down, much quicker. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks, and your Jay. temperature was normal. Mine was. Okay, <laughs> good. <laughs> we'll be right back. Next couple of days, similar, will be well into the 70s. A good amount of sunshine. Just beware of some patchy fog early tomorrow morning. Otherwise, sunny to round out the work week and those above average temperatures. The average high is 70 and will be well above that this weekend. Back below average in the 60s. Thank you, Adam, and thank you for watching the News at 5 with us. World News up next. See you back here at 6 with our live interview with Governor Greg Abbott.